and welcome to the NBS show. I am your usurper host, the man, the myth, the hypocrite, Silver Quill. Today I have taken over the duties as Master of Chaos. So, you know, typical Monday. And with it's me, Sunday. I, you don't know that. <laughs> it's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> it's always five o'clock somewhere. Technically, it's Monday on my end. Ah, there you okay. go. Ha ha! I'm validated. And joining me in my gallery of craziness, we have James Cork, the man who watches movies and tries and succeeds to draw. <laughs> Hello, I'm here to list all of the things. And also podcast extraordinaire and planeswalker Norman Sanzo. Hello, I come from the future. You know what, this joke is so outdated. Uh, we're going to do this. Let's do this. And also a Pegasus with giant bird wings and also future Restraining Order collector, Sapphire Heart Song. I'm the girl in this podcast. That <laughs> is all. That is a thing you are. <laughs> Wait, what? She's a girl? Oh! oh yeah. Nor- Norman? Norman? <laughs> Do you want out. me to pull out the boobs? <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Well, oh, welcome to it, gone. man. Welcome okay. to MBS show after dark. Uh, no, <laughs> that, that, that podcast doesn't exist. Not officially yet. yet. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, yeah, yeah. What have I done? Count me in. I want to be in it. <laughs> uh. Well, anyway. Alrighty. So let us let us talk about this season, the season of the fives, the season where we started with a big map sending us to Equalitiesville and ended with a map sending us back in time, and a lot of stuff happened in between. But if you haven't heard our podcast on that, shame on you. Well, I think they're forced to because this comes out uh, second to that one. <laughs> so we are going to share our top five, the, the five episodes we enjoyed the most out of the season, our bottom five, the ones we recommend you can either give a pass or just avoid at all costs. And how does this season stack up against others? Where have we been? What's been going on? So, I propose inverted alphabetical order, but since I'm hosting, I will refrain until the end on things. So, Sapphire. Yes, let's, darling? Let's talk top fives. Your your five favoritest episodes this season. Number five, um, Hoofields and McColtz. It was a fun episode. I, well, my dad has apparently a bit of a history with the McCoys, and it was fun when he was actually watching the episode with me and laughing at it. Number four, I'm going to say Crusaders of the Lost Mark, as the fandom cries. Mostly because, well, I'm glad that the Cutie Mark Crusaders got their Cutie Marks and whatnot, but the redemption fell a little bit flat. Number three, I'm mending fences, although I hate the collab I did on it. It was still an enjoyable, relatable episode that made me f- go, well, continuity crazy. Uh, number two, the main attraction. I enjoyed the music, and this is coming from somebody who was raised on rock and metal. I enjoyed the characters. I absolutely hate Sven Gallup, but that also makes him my favorite villain this season, because I hate him so much. And number one. Canterlot Boutique. I am an artist, and this hits home so well for me. And, well, Rarity is best pony, in my opinion, of the main six. So, with a great Rarity episode, it just really hit home for me. That in Fleur de Lis is my waifu, so seeing her more than once also made the episode a little bit better. Excellent. Moving on. Moving on, we move to Norman Sanzo. So, my top fives are, first, starting at number five, Skyrimaster. That one was an interesting episode because of the leak, and I do enjoy this highly just because of Fluttershy is a weeboo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Number four, Crusaders of the Lost Mark. This one was five years in the works with how the Crusaders got their cutie marks. And we've been there. We've been there from the very beginning. And to see them get their cutie marks in the end 
is worth the wait. Number three, slice of life. This one has also been five years in the making and we had a lot of influence on this episode to make it what it is with how insane most of the background characters are and just having kind of a say in said episode. Number two, thanks for the memories. Just because of how the facial animations are, um, Rainbow Dash and Tank's relationship is really awesome in this one. And the song in this one is just too good. And my number one is the main attraction. A really good Applejack episode. The song is awesome. Lena Hall performance is way over the top. And a good final episode for imitating Rogers. Excellent. James, what are your top fives for this year? Season? <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm pretty sure I'm setting up myself to get beat up by the entire fandom because Crusaders of the Lost Mark is not in it. <laughs> 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 they are going to kill me, each and every single one of them. Uh, okay. My number five is Brotherhood's Social. Um, and that one is only at the bottom of it because uh, as fun as the slapstick and the comedy and all that is, uh, it's, it pales in comparison to the uh, final monologue that Big Mac has with Apple Bloom. I mean, it's, uh, it, I want to consider it the best writing Dave Polsky has done for the show, uh, so far. And he has written some very good episodes. I mean, for whom the Sweetie Belt Oils, uh, 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 keep calm and flutter on. It's, he's, he's a very good writer. Uh, underrated, I'll say, but I think this is his best, uh, uh, his best work. A perfect representation of what it's like to be the older brother in a family where, uh, a younger brother is the one that is succeeding and making it best. And, uh, that, that final moment between Big Mac and his little sister is just way too touching and way too relatable not to get very emotional about it. Uh, my number four is Scare Master. Uh, it's, it's a joy to have Halloween back on the show in such style. It's fantastic to see an episode that is, that deals with Fluttershy in a non-insulting, rather progressive way where she finally gets some character out of it and we can see some, uh, growth in her and also in such a, such a fun, and visually interesting, uh, manner. It's like, it's one of the most visually interesting episodes of the entire season. Uh, my number three is Rarity Investigates. I don't have anything else to say about this one. It's film noir. It's Rarity playing LA noir. It's, it's, it's Maltese Falcon, Casablanca, any Humphrey Bogart movie compressed in 22 minutes. And it's, it's a pure joy. Uh, number two, it's a slice of life. Which I think I say the same thing Norman said about this one is like if it wasn't for us this show this episode wouldn't wouldn't exist, but mostly because this episode shouldn't work because it's insane the amount of things that happen in it is just crazy and so ha- somehow they managed to pull it off with a lot of style and 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 in such a such a good way also love the message at the end saying that every 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 character is the, every person is the protagonist of their own story, even the small characters, and they all have an impact in ours. Uh, but all, all those four episodes, they have nothing on the number one, which is Amending Fences, which is my number one favorite episode of, the, favorite episode of the entire season. Because there is, there is nothing, uh, there is nothing that says this is where you were and this is where you are right now as a flashback to season one, and then showing how far we've come, uh, both uh, as a fandom and seeing Twilight go from that uh, little unicorn to the alicorn princess that she is right now. So that's it. Yeah. That's right five. And Excellent. Silver? Yes, indeed. So, starting with numero cinco, I went with Castle Sweet Castle. Uh Just... You know, I, I'm still not really used to the trees look. I still find it out of place. But this was an attempt to add some vitality, to acknowledge the change, to, to give Twilight a little grieving over the Golden Oaks Library, and remind us that it's the memories we make that really give meaning to a home. Now, granted, Twilight's memories over the season have been people destroying her home. Ad nauseum. Thanks, Yaks. Thanks a lot. But 
at least it was a start and attempt to make this more than just a toy sale. Did it succeed? Uh, I'm not really sure, but it's just the way it goes. Number five, number four, rather, uh, Brotherhood of Social. I too swoon over Big Mac's talk with Apple Bloom, his characterization. Peter News' excellent tweet, uh, as people challenged whether this was depicting transgender or transsexuals and his defense and acknowledgement of those folks, but also saying this is more about a guy who just isn't comfortable expressing himself. So it was a very eloquent piece. That's always a, a bonus when an episode gets people talking. Number three. The main attraction, the best Applejack episode in the in the entire show. I agree that Lena Hall was a fantastic voice actor. She was a very lovable character as Countess Cholera Turtle. And <laughs> yeah, he remembers. And uh, <laughs> I remember too. But it was Applejack and her determination, insight, stubborn slash aggressiveness. But ultimately, it's her helping a friend, and they finally got the. It seems the writers clicked that Applejack's at her best helping someone in need, not being so stubborn that everyone else is trying to help her. We don't get to explore that a lot of Applejack in our own episodes, so I'm glad. I'm very glad that we got to see that side of her. Could you say that? Um, Actually, never mind. I was going to make an Undertale reference with the determination factor. Moving on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love that. She was I, filled with it. I w- oh, she was looking up at ruins and filled with determination. Do you want to say? <laughs> Number two, amending fences. I am always a proponent of continuity, and this one just went to high gear, taking one minor line from the start of the show and expanding upon it, I still criticize that Moondancer made a choice. Don't blame it all on Twilight. But we are sympathetic. We have all made that mistake, I think. I think, at least. Many of us can empathize with that error. So it's not that it's a perfect representation. It's that it represents imperfection. And I enjoy that very much. Which leads us to my number one choice, Tanks for the memories. Rainbow was anything but perfect in this. In fact, I'm sure many people are still upset that she conducted industrial sabotage and got away scot-free. But the heart of it, the representation of the grieving process, the way it got people thinking and talking, and that blending of humor, drama, world-building with cloud sale, uh, all of it just came together for this wonderful episode that carried more meaning. You can make it just a fun romp with Rainbow escalating the the drama until it literally explodes, or you can look at it as a talk about the grieving process and the metaphors contained therein. So that was just a lot of fun. And now that we've all been positive, get ready, because we're about to get nasty. And then everybody in the fandom will have a far cry and then chase us and stalk us at our hells. With and pitchforks and torches. And nobody will care. Woo! Uh, if the fandom has proven something, is that after a while, they stop really caring. <laughs> we <laughs> shall see. Let us test the resolve. Sapphire, you're first on the chopping block. Oh, joy. Well, oh I'm going God, to be so different <laughs> and speak a language that nobody but maybe Norman can speak. I'm speaking Chinese, dang it. Number woo! Well, woo. I'm... <laughs> I guess I'd have to say the cutie remark. It was an underwhelming season finale. It was fun to look at, like, the alternate timelines, like I said. But it is not my favorite episode, let alone my favorite finale. I think we've all already expanded upon why I hate this episode. So, number A, C... <laughs> he are sound so yeah. I'd have to say uh what about Discord? It was a bland episode. I was as curious as Twilight and I wanted to strangle Discord, especially at the ending. I mean, you take this fun concept that Discord had been playing along with throughout the season, and I'd like to think that he's been changing, but you can tell from the very end of 
the episode, he was playing Twilight for the sake of malicious reasons. And that just was like, nope. That was my nope moment. Number son! Sorry, I didn't really come prepared for, like, the, um, you know, worst part. Because I like these episodes so much. Um, I guess I'll have to go with Princess Spike. We, I want to defend Spike as it wasn't his fault. He was influenced by the people around him. Actually, no, I just blame the people. Spike had nothing wrong with him at first. So, I blame the concept, especially friggin' with, what's his name, Fluffy Clouds, or... Somebody took my seat! <laughs> it's Somebody, the end of the I world! Love, I call my friend! <laughs> <laughs> that sparked my, really, factor. Number, er, no, E-R, R. <laughs> I guess I'll have to say do Princess's Dream mag Magic Sheep. It wasn't, like, at first I thought it was kind of a, a fun episode until, like, others have said, like, this. And then I eventually started to catch on to this. Of course, I saw a Silver Supplement video. But this kind of sparked back to my Luna hatred days to where no matter what, I hated Luna. But now I understand Luna, so it's okay. And number one, and I know everybody here will hate me for this, Scare Master. Huh. I hate this episode because of how much of a- That's not a word! She is, like, throughout this episode. I mean, maybe this was by my raised way of thinking of grow a pair, but- wow. Yeah, I was raised by bikers, so I'm I'm an introverted personality, but I'm willing to try new things. But I will say it was fun at the end, and I understand if Fluttershy like didn't want to come back next year after the experience. At least she's trying. But I cannot excuse the very, very unrealistic excuses for simple activities, like chewing on a piece of candy. Oh, I'll choke to death and then somebody will try to kill me or whatever. Really? Why? Just, just why? That and I wasn't really a fan of, um, Luna Eclipsed. I was hoping this would be better, but sadly my expectations were not met. Then again, maybe that's just wrong on my part. Yes, but then again, wrong. I also kinda... wrong. I'm gonna go get. I'm gonna go get the hanging thin ready. You guys go get her. <laughs> You're going to get the noose. Oh no! I yes, better run away. I'll hold silver <laughs> hostage. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Th this is this is how that goes. Hey, I just did the call as a hostage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I you shot the hostage. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you still shooting the hostage? Stop shooting the hostage. Okay, really, I'm just gonna go now. <laughs> I'm kidding. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, Silver, I love you, but I need to kill you in order to get what I want. Wow. I don't know. I'm oh. kidding. You well, know I'm kidding, right? God. So you've met my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> You had a girlfriend at one point? <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I'm sorry, that was mean. Oh, wow. Okay, somebody somebody move on before Silvercoal has the burning desire to this kill me. This is going into the final episode, you know that this is happening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, um, I think I'll take it. Are you okay, Silver? <laughs> I'm I sorry. I'm crying on the inside and sharpening and winding the noose, but sure. <laughs> I love you, Silver. I don't mean all the things I say. <laughs> Wait, Please that's don't a, hate me. <laughs> that's a contradiction. I love you, but I don't mean the things I say. So. <laughs> okay, move on to Norman before the knives come out, and then I end up hiding in the bunker. Oh, the knives are already out, and they are in, the, oh, in your house direction. <laughs> well, this is going to be interesting. 
Anyway, uh, yeah, my take on the whole bad episode is no such thing. Disappointing episode, yes, but to me, all of the episodes are worth a watch. But since it's a list, then, well, I have to put it up then. So, my list here is in no particular order, but I'll just say from start from episode 1 to the last. So, my my list here goes for Bloom and Gloom. I didn't really feel this one. I, I'm not saying that it's bad, but to me, it could have been done better. And the whole dream in dreams in, in dreams kind of thing is, yeah, it's been overplayed and yeah, but it's not bad. It's okay, but... It's just not my cup of tea. Second on the list is Appaloosa Most Wanted. It's not bad, but trouble shoes here. Uh, I don't know. I'm seeing a pattern here, but it's not bad, but it's not my cup of tea. Uh, the next one on the list is, what about Discord? Discord here was malicious. I think I said what I needed, I needed to say in the review, but it's not a bad episode, but it just irks me. The next one on the list is the hoof. Field and McCults. Not saying that I hate this one, it's just that I think I've mentioned it on the review where I don't like the trope. It irks me. That's about it. And last on the list is the cutie remark. I think I said what I needed to say in that review, but I'll just say it here. Starlight Glimmer was just poor. And someone else, take it. Alright, oh. James, you're, you're up, man. Okay, yes. I'm up. Uh, I subscribe to what Norman said. This show has no bad episodes, or at least it hasn't had a really unwatchable episode in like quite some time. Like any, any of the episodes of this season, it's funny. We haven't had a, to me, we haven't had an episode that I deem unwatchable since season two, which I really don't understand those apologists that say that season two was the last good season of MLP. I don't under, I don't see it. But, uh, these are like, in my opinion, what are, le- what are like the, the, the weakest of, of the season. And to continue on the silliness of the names for the, for the numbers and all that, I'm gonna, I'm, I came out with my own numbers, so, uh, let's go up. So, uh, number banana, uh, will be Do Princess's Dream of Magic Ship. Now, I'd watch this episode Anytime it's visually very good looking and all that, but I hate how Princess Luna comes across as a, as a sadomasochist that wants to like punish herself for something that technically we all know she has moved on from. Or else what will be the point of trying to help others cope and deal with their own nightmares? Uh, narratively speaking, it makes absolutely no sense and uh, it kind of is a disservice to the character of, of Princess Luna and how she has been built over the past four years. Um, in a uh, number chorizo, uh, will be Appaloosa's most wanted. And uh, this one kind of hurts me because I love the character of Troubleshoes, but the straightforward play of the tropes, the Wild West tropes in the episode kind of hurts me. Uh, it's good to see Brayburn. It's good to see a new character that is portrayed in such a likable way. But everything else feels out of place, out of balance, and the Cutie Mark Crusaders, god, they are such, they, 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 they play in this episode, they play the, the role of stupid children character that is supposed to make something stupid for the plot to move, fo- to move forward. Which I hate. Uh, number pineapple, uh, will be Princess Spike, and I think that this has been on everybody else's list, right? Not mine. I think so. Yeah. At least mine. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's, yes, that, uh, I think you're kind of right when you say that, Sapphire, that his character is not really at fault with what he does, but everyone else is portrayed in such a hateable way. In that, yeah. oh my gosh, you guys are so, why don't you just give a break to, to Spike and Twilight? Why are you so stupid? And fancy pants, I thought you were a fun guy or, or a straight up good guy. Why are you such an, such a, such an a-hole? He doesn't <sighs> deserve my waifu. Just, oh, well. I'll take his waifu. I'll take my waifu now. Thank you of very course. little. <laughs> of course, of course you will. Uh, num- uh, number pumpkin will be the cutie remark. And we just reviewed that one. So I mean, okay, fine. The episode is not, not terrible, but my gosh, was it like weak in, in, in all the parts that it should matter. Like conflict, story, character motivation, 
character the character construction again visually speaking super pretty but eh. ah but the 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 number one that is the bottom one the num number cabbage it will be what about discord and that is by far one that is a borderline unwatchable episode for me it's not unwatchable because uh i mean it still has the talent of John Delancey it's still fun to watch him play this character and enjoy loving being discord but Oh my god, the way that every single character shafts Twilight to the sidelines, it's so painful to watch, and there is not even a satisfying resolution. Because it all kind of comes across as, oh, if you are, if you have your friends being mean, be mean to you, what you have to do is being mean back to them. That will teach them. That's how friendships work, right? We are not giving a bad lesson to children whatsoever. We are, we are making sure that kids know how to handle conflict. By turning the conflict around and onto their other friends. Ah, oh, we're giving such good lessons. Now, where is that Hasbro paycheck? <laughs> I need to buy another boat. Yeah. I, I, I'm not a big fan of that episode. Not even, not even the Bob Ross reference can save it. That's how bad it is. Ah, Bob Ross. Why did yeah. Discord have to ruin you? Oh, by the way, can I switch out one of my episodes for Appaloosa's Most Wanted? Because I forgot about that episode. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh God. God. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> you, you can totally change the Scare Master for Appaloosa's Most Wanted. Of course, because, you know what? Yeah, I think I for... will, because... <laughs> what, really? Actually, I will. <laughs> I was joking. Oh, okay. I was joking. I... Okay. Are We've you self... serious? <laughs> We've salvaged that episode, kind of. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh my god, I was okay. really joking. Do you really want to change that one for Appaloosa's Most Wanted? Yeah. Well, why, why Like, I that? just remember... I forgot about that episode, and I tried... I did everything I could to forget about that episode, <laughs> and then you people reminded me, and I... now it's on my number one! <laughs> <sighs> okay, okay, moving okay, on. Okay, okay, call out the hanging. There is no need to... <laughs> Silver, lose the news. You don't have to use it anymore. Uh, I, you know, I would, but then there was that whole girlfriend crap, so, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. oh, okay, okay. So, I'm, I'm sorry. You, you want to fish on the cheese. You want to fish on the cheese. You I have no problem. Uh, with oh, well. <laughs> I, I oh, come on, admit, that was funny. I'm looking, I'm looking at the list. <laughs> uh, and it ain't the list we're talking about. Oh, my. Uh, but anyway. Uh, but speaking would you of like this, a fish on the cheek? Mm. If you could do that through the internet, I'd be terrified. <laughs> nah. No, she'll do it in your sleep. Oh God, no. <laughs> okay, we've gone from a we've gone from NBS after dark to NBS restraining order. Okay, okay, let's stop before I end up even creeping out. Blah, 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 I am. Maybe it's NBS, NBS CSI. <laughs> I am the official nutcrack. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Uh, okay. Alrighty. So I guess it's my turn on the, the negative mm -hmm. Yes. So, and I will take a radically different stance from Norman and James. There are bad episodes. There's good things in these episodes, but the bad outweighs the good. There are episodes that send a con conflicting message, or they undermine a character. Or they make the world less interesting. And as a result, I think that's a bad thing. So I will call them bad episodes. I will not, however, say you should feel bad for have written this episode. We all try. We all stumble. The question is, can you learn from them? Yes. Because I'm thinking, like, Meriwether Williams started off with what many consider to be a truly bad, bad episode. Oh, yeah. Mm. And she only got worse. Really? I thought I thought Bats was a uh, was a big step upwards. Yeah, and then she got fired. <laughs> yes, Bats. I, Don't remind I, me of that episode. She Where hasn't written a single funny? episode after season four. She hasn't written a single episode in season five. That was her last. Well, I don't know. I haven't kept up on the news on that. We'll see. There, it's always hard to tell with these TV types. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but anywho, let's start with number five on my list. The the least baddest of the bad. Party pooped. Hmm. Yaks. That's all I have to say. Actually, that's not Bull true. Yak. But but that's uh the yak all of this is hinging on the yaks being the most unpleasant diplomats you could imagine. Followed by Twilight, 
not doing a very good job herself. And at the end, I still find it very disappointing that she did not share the credit with Pinky to Celestia. I know Celestia has, she's in the know. She knows where the, where the strength of this, uh, team up shown. But it means a lot when Twilight acknowledges her flaws. Number four, Appaloosa's most wanted. I too enjoy trouble shoes. I enjoy his character, his sort of Eeyore-esque woe is me. But I don't enjoy what this did to cutie marks. That suddenly it's not your special talent that you've discovered. It's what you've been assigned. It was a little disappointing that Braeburn, a guy who seemed like the most reasonable stallion in season one, is now very unreliable and dumb. Uh, so I, I fear he, he got diminished quite terribly. It, it's all that rule 34, it goes to your head. Oh dear. Mm-hmm. Uh, it makes you dumber. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Numero tres. <laughs> the one where Pinkie Pie knows. What can I say? I love Pinkie in this episode. I love her physicality, but the whole point of this episode is to be really excited for the royal baby. To be really, truly thrilled for characters that are, don't show up until the final third, and even then, bow out as quickly as possible. If ever there's a highlight that for whatever reason, Cadence and Shining Armor are not allowed to be participants in this show, but just a generically lovely couple, here it is. And you come away from it it's like, I'm not looking forward to this new addition to their family. Not because of anything bad that's going to happen, but because I know nothing's really going to happen. Here's the baby. It looks cute. It's perfect. Moving on. <laughs> so, and indeed moving on to number two. What about Discord? What about him? This was an episode where it's kind of funny that both this and the one where Pinkie Pie knows. One gives the secret away right at the beginning, so there's no tension, but we're meant to empathize with Pinky's struggle to hold in the excited announcement. The other one, we never find out what really happened. We're meant to share in Twilight's confusion and frustration at being the odd one out. However, unlike Twilight, we have a remote control or browser close button that can turn off the episode and go do something else. You gotta hook us. And there wasn't really a big hook. It was just... Sort of going through, I will credit that Discord may have taught Twilight an important lesson, albeit maliciously, but that is something that trickster personas do. So I I don't know if I resent Discord as much as others, but at the same time, this episode feels like a dud because nothing really happened to catch our interests. And my least favorite episode of the season, Princess Spike. Nobody comes out of this looking good. Definitely not the canterlot ponies who are, as we've said, dumb as bricks. Definitely not the princesses who just go off screen but don't step in to help Twilight. Don't Twilight does not come off well because she did not plan very well. She doesn't have uh, de- delegated fallbacks for she can't help or sharing her plan with anyone. And while Spike is more victim than antagonist, he did try to climb out a window when stuff got bad. And he has never, I don't know if he's ever tried to duck out of responsibility before. I'm, I'm trying to recall and I can't. I'm trying to recall either and I cannot recall either. No. So that, that, that is, history. that is a, a disservice to his character. So Princess Spike does just drags everyone through the mud, it seems. And that is why it was my least favorite point of this season. But it is good to know that the, la- that the weakest point of the season happened that early. Yes, it only got better from there. Yeah. Yes. Although this is what the writers get for hiring Johnny Test writers. <laughs> oh, oh wow. my God! Is that is that like a trope? Is that bad writing in Johnny Test? Johnny Test is widely widely despised on the internet. It's funny yes. because your your two weakest episodes of the season, which are I think in everybody else's lists, they all come from the same writer. They both come from the same writer. Like, what about Discord and Prince Spike are written for, the, for by the same person? Well, oh that's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised with the list of bads that we kind of share because I was not expecting Silver to say 
uh, what was it again? Party pooped? No, no, party pooped. Some... No, I wasn't expecting. Uh, I, I was. I wasn't, the, you know the one I wasn't expecting to be on that list, the one where Pinkie Pie knows. I really wasn't expecting them to to, to see that one there. I didn't really mind it as much. Like, sure, the joke of Pinkie Pie, like being having to keep this secret, is like played throughout the episode as one joke. Well, it's well if you're playing off one joke, it eventually stops being funny. I mean, the only joke I liked throughout that whole entire episode was manly horse noises. <laughs> Shining armor's geek. <laughs> Yes, that was yeah. the best thing ever. Yeah, he's such a dork. I know, I loved it. Yeah, I love him too. I think the episode that I was surprised by all of us is Appaloosa's Most Wanted. Uh, it it I had forgot fun. About it. it had fun elements, but the overall effect is kind of heartbreaking. Yeah, because I thought that when we reviewed the episode, we kind of liked it, but only a few things in between that put it down. I, I didn't thought that all four of us would be in unison to say that, no, we didn't, it's good, but it's not that good. Well, it's it's the least bad of my list. Mm. It, uh, it has fun elements, but it's just not there for me. My favorite joke from your review of it, though, was the Satan joke. <laughs> what the, what the hell, have? kids? You know, the one that I am, that, that I'm seeing that it's missing from all the lists is like the one that, that kind of came on the on the meh middle of the spectrum, it's like it's not good enough to be on the top five, but it's not bad enough to be on the bottom five. Nobody has said um, the 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 grand uh, the grand galloping gala episode. You mean um, make new friends but keep uh-huh. Discord? That one? I I don't know. To me, that one was not bad, but it was not good. It was in the middle of the road because it had a lot of. Uh, pop culture reference to make it entertaining, but it also had, well, a few things to kind of pull it down in terms of this is awkward and not fun. And Tree Hugger's, uh, horse noises were pretty entertaining. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I refer to like Silver's review. Whale. I refer to, refer to Silver's review. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like it's, a dying cat. it's either a dying cat or a humping whale. Oh, you worse. determine. <laughs> I still remember that review so fondly because every time Silver tried to say something, James keep interrupting me. <laughs> Sorry. And I and I was I was ready to become violent. <laughs> yeah. You were like you were like two, two, two steps away from taking the shotgun. It's like, okay, okay, I'm fine. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop Nain. I'll stop Nain. Please don't kill me. I have a family. <laughs> oh, wow. But seriously, I, I think, uh, well, Silver mentioned it before, there are bad episodes. But to me, if I'm entertained, then it's not bad. I, I'm just disappointed that it's not good. But with that in mind, let's switch it up to alphabetical order because we must now ask the question, how does this season as a whole stack up against previous seasons? This is a hard one. There's two episodes here that compile five seasons worth of stuff. And that is, uh, well, uh, Slice of Life and uh, what you call this? I'm an infancy. No, not I'm an infancy. Uh, give me a second. The Crusaders of the Lost mark so these two episodes in my book are worth the bump in whatever spot i put them at so do we go inverted alphabetical order alphabetical order to speak about these ones do we pick turns because i actually i, I have it very clear where i uh, stack this one compared to the then others it, then it's good we're going alphabetical order chance because you're up first awesome <laughs> awesome i'm going first all right so uh, i guess i cannot t- say where i'll put this one uh, if I don't say where I'll put the other one, the other ones, uh, first. Um, usually I stack seasons regarding on the, on the amount of good things and bad things that they do, and the amount of good and bad episodes that it have, that it has in them. I, I am a very tolerant guy. I have a high tolerance level for uh, bad things. Just to put it simple, I am able to watch all of the UEBOL filmography without actually vomiting. That's how much of an endurance I have when it comes to watching something that is bad or that is good. So when I deem something unwatchable, 
<laughs> that's because it's really bad. And in my opinion, season two had the most amount of unwatchable episodes, all the way up to five. That not even if you pointed me with a gun, I'd, I'd say, no, I watched this episode. No, no, I, I don't wanna. So I'd have to put season two on the bottom, saying that is the weakest season of the, of the five. Uh, and I think that I will put season five on the same level as season four, which is my, which, which is my current favorite. They, they both have, they are kind of similar when you think about it. They start with a big conflict. Uh, they, they, they have some fun pandering here and there. A Discord appears very little, but he's, uh, he's somewhat still implemented into the story. And, yeah, I, I, I'll, and they are both very experimental, but at the same time they played very safe. What with the, the whole story about the QT map and being taken into different places in Equestria. So yeah, I'll say season five and season four are my, my current top favorite seasons. Uh, they are right there, number one. Yeah, that's, that's where I'd put it. Mm. There we go. Norman, what's, what's your view on things? Well, I think I mentioned before, there's no such thing as bad episodes, but in seasons, oh wow, this is this is a hard one because I like all of them, and to pick which one is best is kind of hard because in terms of production level, obviously season one's production is not going to be that good. There's a lot of derps here and there, and season five is much better in terms of animation and whatnot, but in terms of story... I would have to go for, uh, let's see, maybe in last place would be season three. It has a few good episodes here and there, but most of the episodes were kind of meh in my book. So I, I'm not 100% sure I would say that. Since it's a short season, it's kind of okay. Um, lack of episode makes this show a bit topsy-turvy. It has a few good points, but in terms of episode stories and whatnot, this is... yeah. I'm, I don't want to put it last, but I think I have to. Fourth place would be Season 2. Still going for the whole story aspect. There's a lot of um, episodes where I don't want to watch it kind of deal, where I I could skip it if I want to. And one example is um, Secret of My Excess. It was an okay episode overall, but it is just not... I don't know. In, in my book, it's kind of meh. Having more episodes to well tell a story gives that sense of, hmm, how many good ones versus how many bad ones. Number three would be uh, Season 5. Middle of the road. Yeah, because like I mentioned before, it had a lot of good things going for it. Because, like I mentioned, the two episodes, Slice of Life and Crusaders of the Lost Mark, those are the two episodes that made the show worth it. And a few good other episodes, like um, the Thanks for the Memories, that was pretty cool. Like, the song was awesome. Like, Daniel Ingram knew what to do with um, the songs. And we got Griffins back, which is cool. Uh, number two for... Me would be probably season one. Wow. It started off the whole thing where I like this show. It started off the whole thing. <laughs> it started it yeah. all. I like this show. Oh my God, what's happening to me? And it got us to where we are now. Technically, four strangers from across the world talking to each other about this show and discussing about what's our favorite season. So... Because of this, I have to give the start, well, the second place, which is strange. And it has a few good moments, like the Sonic Rainbow episode. That was awesome. And my number one, obviously, would be season four. Just because it was cool. There were a lot of good episodes in it where I don't mind watching it again. I wish I could remember which one were they, but hey... They were all, oh yeah, testing, testing, one, two, three. That was a fun one. That was a fun oh, yeah. one. The Pinkie Pie rap, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm. who's next on the list? Well, I believe that's Sapphire. Hi. 
Hi, let's let's hear it. <laughs> Spill the beans, oh, sister. My God. <laughs> I'm not related to you. <laughs> anyway, I that am sort know. of on. I'm on the same boat as Norman, but my middle, like in between the worst and the best, is a little mixed. But this is kind of a list based on memory and based on personal experiences because. I really didn't get invested into, like, reviewing and talking about, like, the episodes, looking into them on a deeper perspective until I discovered the analysis community in Season 4. Like, before Season 4, actually. So, number three was definitely, you know, Season 3. Like, my last is Season 3. I really didn't have much of an impact with this season. Like, I didn't really see any bad episodes. It was sort of meh. Although, considering... Norman, you know my story of how I became a brony. Oh. My dad thought I was watching... That's not a word! So, oh, when okay. you binge watch... When you binge watch seasons one and two, like, until you've been caught up on the season, and then suddenly season three is going to be coming out next month, you're excited because of this amazing show that you've been introduced to, although you haven't been invested into the franchise yet, like, into the community. Season 3, other than Magical Mystery Cure, I really didn't see much out of it. So I just mostly got invested with, like, the Gorillas, um fan base. I don't know how I got truly invested into the series, but it was somewhere when I was using my 3DS as my YouTube source because I had my computer taken away. I had, like, started binge-watching YouTube and started looking into pony stuff, and then I discovered the analysis community, blah, 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 before so on. Anyway, season three didn't leave much of an impact, but number two is season one. Well, it's see not number two. Number four is season one. Season one, it was a fun ride, but it was the beginning. It wasn't spectacular, although I did get invested when my first episode was Dog and Pony Show. This was the episode that made me think, you know what, I'll keep watching. Because, well, Norman, you my you know my story. Mm-hmm. It was a fun, cute, slice-of-life type of thing that I enjoyed during the time. Of course, number three is season two, because this was the season of I'm a Brony. I wasn't too invested into the show, but I was starting, I was newly budding into becoming a Brony, with this season because I had so much fun watching everything. It was just a fun experience to know these characters, what they went through, so on. Number two is season five. Season five is difficult to explain because it comes off with this strange vibe that I can't put my finger on. Like, it's with season four, like, once again, it's a vibe that I can't put my finger on, but either way, I enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy it as much as season four, but season five seemed to play with itself psychologically, and it seemed to play around with, like, redeeming past sins from previous seasons, as well as redeem old characters, introduce new ones, and so on. I enjoyed season five for that aspect. Of course, you know how I feel about the last season, but as we all know, number one is season four. This was one heck of a ride, and I remember this season fondly because it introduced me to this concept of analysis, but... It also introduced me to various opinions and developing my own thoughts on episodes and whatnot. 
Of course, I didn't have the equipment during the time to put my thoughts out there for others to see. However, I am grateful for that season for opening my eyes. And also, thank you, Silver Quill. I'm, I've expressed my undying gratefulness towards you for even giving me a chance. Oh, come on. <laughs> but if it weren't for you, Voice of Reason, Josh, well, Josh doesn't really know me outside of me arguing with him over which Pokemon version was better. Original oh, classic, classic, man. <laughs> Oh, come Red, on. Blue, Silver yellow. and gold all the way. What? Silver anyway. and gold all the way. Oh, get my shotgun. Yeah, pretty much. It's, it's all I'll Silver's get my fault. I'm here. <laughs> I thank him for introducing me, as well as other reviewers and analysts, to this concept and opening my eyes. That's why season four is my best season. Oh, yeah, and we all know that Dragon Ball Z fight. That's also oh, cool. Dragon, okay, dragon. I'm done. <laughs> Silver, your turn. Ah, yes. This long and winding road of poniness. As I pontificate. Oh. All right. I, I think we, I think we're very much in unity, uh, except for James, that season three seemed to be a weaker entry. Yeah. The sto- there were good stories in there. Uh, Sleepless in Ponyville, I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. But this was an, this was a season where it felt like they were just sort of trying to fill out the numbers. And they invoked a hasty, rushed change that made people uncertain about the future, but not excited. And even, even M.A. Larson himself distance it really doesn't recognize the final product as anything he made. This was the, this was an unwanted episode by all. Uh, which makes the contrast between it and Crusaders of the Lost Mark so funny. So season three just didn't work. And it introduced the Crystal Empire, a place I found to be synonymous with disappointment. There's nothing in the Crystal Empire that makes me go, yay. It's shiny though. That's just but it. That's it's, all it is. <laughs> it's trying to, it's trying to sparkle me into submission. I will not be done in. Well, I'm a sucker for that, so okay. <laughs> I, I, I could make a, I could make a case and try to defend season three. Uh, hell, I put it on like the middle of the road for me. I didn't put it in a position in the, in my list. But I could, I could, I could try and, and defend it at any other point. Please continue with, uh, with, I'll, with your I'll do a quick, um, uh, defense on season three part. I do like just for psychics and games when you play with how they interact with each other, like, it's one of those rare episodes where it crosses the streams, which is really cool. I do like that idea, and I wish they do it again. Well, they kind of did it, okay. but not in this kind of way. But that's the only good thing I can defend it for. When you have been commissioned to do th- uh, three seasons, and suddenly they say, "Oh no, the budget for season three is only worth is only worth for like thirteen episodes." Every episode in season three feels like a two-parter that has been crammed into a one episode. Every single episode. Now, if you watch the entire season on a run, it kind of works because it has that super sped up pace that only works within that season, making it a strange animal. Now, I will agree that the last episode, the Magical Mystery Cure, doesn't really work all that well. But for an episode, it's an episode that doesn't work on logic or like narrative structure. It's an episode that works purely on emotion. So as a purely emotional episode is excellent. As a narrative episode is a complete and absolute mess. Um, but like I said, any season with an episode that is unwatchable is already as, as a notch down on my, on my list. I can watch every episode of season three, no matter how bad they are. Without like feeling insulted or like I'm being talked down. Even Wonderbolt's Academy, I'd be able to sit down and watch it, no problem. Despite how much that episode infuriates me. Alrighty. Alright. Sorry, I hijacked <laughs> your, 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 your part of the, your, your list. Um, yeah, I apologize. Sorry. No worries. No worries. Let us move on to number four, which is kind of hard because I'm, I have to put season two there. Which is odd because that, like Sapphire says, that's the season for me where I'm a brony. Holy cow, I actually like this. 
And it was the one where I caught up with the show. Now I was looking forward to each episode each week. It wasn't just marathoning or, you know, have, having little bursts. This, this was new, exciting. I didn't know what was going to happen next. And it had some really good and enjoyable episodes. It was sort of up until Mystery on the Friendship Express, it was just this hurrah, we found our stride based on the previous season. Then things started to go, started to change, and unfortunately, I still hold Cancel That Wedding Part 1 as my least favorite episode of the series. Yes, I'm not alone. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, Somebody it, died. It was, it was the episode that undermined their friendship, all for the sake of advertising a royal playset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, the, the, yeah, can you tell I'm bitter? Oh, well. Mm -hmm. That episode sucks. <laughs> uh, so at number three spot, I'm going to put season five, not because of anything it's done wrong, but because it is, it's the season of background characters, truly. Well, we had some really good episodes that we all enjoyed. The thing that everyone's taking away from is, oh my gosh, Slice of Life, we helped write that. Oh my gosh, Moon Dancer was so... Sympathetic. I hate Suri uh, or uh, Starlight. Uh, Gilda's box is so cool. Ev we're talking about everyone but the main six. Yeah. Because even though they had accomplishments, there may have been less growth. It was not a season for our main heroines, and I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know if that will continue on through season six or not. We'll see. Number dos, I would say season one, the season that started it that cemented it, that really got the momentum going. A lot of when I say in season two, hey, I'm a brony, that's because I was so consistently entertained through season one. Even the episodes that didn't fly didn't strike me as all that really bad, even though that may have just been, hey, I can move on to the next episode right away. Uh, so season one cemented things, and that earns a lot of my respect. And so season four, when we were so disappointed by season three, or uncertain, and so up in arms about Twilight for like nine months, here's <laughs> season four that at least shows, yeah, we've changed things, but we haven't forgotten the core characters. We haven't forgotten what this show is about. Uh, okay, we still had changes that blew up a library and added this poke out your eye play set. Uh, rainbow but, powers. Uh, rainbow powers. Those still have not grown on me. But eh. it, it no still either. had fun, heart, really good episodes. So it was probably the most enjoyable. And yes, it is also where I found my reviewing stride. However, I can't deny I, I started reviewing because of season three and the controversy it sparked. <laughs> mm -hmm. What controversy, by the way? Oh, really? The princess controversy. Oh, the that whole one. thing about, oh, all, all girls like to be princesses. Yeah, and, okay, that one. Oh, sorry, you, you, you'll put it better than me. <laughs> I keep well, doing that. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, it's like, speaking of which, congratulations on 1,000 or 100,000 subscribers. Oh, yeah, congratulations. Yes. You better do something about Ex it now. Expect a YouTube plaque. Oh, dude, yes. Expect a YouTube plaque to come your way. First, first, I, first, I've got to uh, make good on my ra rah rah rainbow promise. <laughs> oh yeah, that one. Yes. That was that was the that was the best news I got on the day where I had to go into surgery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like, hey, I got uh, I got hundred thousand subscribers. Hey, what's that gas there? Where are you going to put that? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on. Well, that's. Well, that's my top seasons. That's, I think we've covered just about everything that we can cover for this grand view of five whole seasons of a show people once wondered would make it past the first. Yeah, that's, that's uh, true. Mm -hmm. From the, from the very start, Hasbro did, did, uh, <coughs> order three seasons out of, uh, DHX studio, uh, studio B. They, they ordered three seasons. They didn't think it was going to last that longer. This show has managed to outlive the, sh the channel in which it started. <laughs> like, the hub is no more. Now it's Discovery Family. 
MLP, mm -hmm. the one series that people didn't have any hopes on whatsoever, is the one that has managed to survive. Transformers Prime is gone. Pound Puppies is gone. Dan versus is gone. Uh, the one that still stands is Friendship is I had a rebuttal for Transformers Prime because Transformers Prime... That one was three seasons. So yes, it ended, yeah, it right? ended, but it continued on to Transformers Robots in Disguise. Well, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, kind of. Eh. No, that, you see, when I see, when I say it's like, yeah, okay, My Little Pony, of course, is going to keep si existing, but at some point, Friendship is Magic is going to stop, and then there's going to be another incarnation. Who knows what, what new characters are going to come in, and who knows how many characters of the original show are going to survive, or if they are even going to be the same iterations. Scootaloo from Generation 3 is not the same Scootaloo we have right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I have to say this, because um, if G5 comes out, I pity the fool that's going to make it because you will have a lot of fan base waiting to see how are you going to tackle this because obviously you can make it good as G4, but how good is it? Are you going to surpass it or is... No, you know, Norman, mm -hmm. you, you know what they're going to do? They're going to follow the DC logic of things. What? They're going to go, guys, guys, these guys, these bronies, they're grown-ups. That means they like dark stuff and dark things. I know. Let's bring in Zack Snyder, the guy who did Man of Steel. We're going to put him to direct all the episodes of, of Generation 5. You know. Yeah. Episode 1, all of the main six get killed. <laughs> I would agree, except for the fact that it's Hasbro. Hasbro has always gone for those kid-friendly kind of things. So... Probably not. I, I don't know. You know that I am being sarcastic and making a joke. I know. <laughs> and I'm running with it. That, when it comes to that, uh, to, to what the future will, will bring us, uh, I say open-minded is the key yeah. word. I, 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 I'm, I'm in the boat where the Devil May Cry remake, they are, they change it to DMC for short. I don't know why. Maybe hip or whatnot. That game was good, but a lot of the core fans did not like it. So... You know, it didn't help that it spat in the face of its critics. Yeah, yeah. yeah Can we that, bring out Randy was... Savage for season, it... like, Generation 5? <laughs> Maybe. Randy Savage? But Randy Savage, is, isn't he dead? He's I the guy he... who um did old Slim Jim commercials, well, I think. I think dead. he's a wrestler? Yeah, he's he's the... he, yeah, he, he died. Aww. He died yeah, like I... years ago. Now I, I feel I... bad. I don't do well... my research. Well, no, but it, you talk about wanting to get dark. Well, let's exhume a corpse for My Little Pony. Okay. Uh, what? Heavens. So let's sparkle going to the cemetery. I need more bones for my experiment, Spike. I don't think they're going to use the same characters over again. But I, I think because of this current fandom, the My Little Pony brand is at a dangerous point right now where one wrong move can... Destroy the brand. No, you see, Norman, the show right now is not surviving because of the brony fandom. There is still little girls getting the toys, little be little boys, little kids getting the toys. That's the core audience. We are a smidge, a blip in Hasbro's radar. We are we we we're tiny. We're small, actually. And when you compare the the MLP fandom with other fandoms. Like, I don't know, I'm gonna go with the Steven Universe fandom for saying one. The Steven Universe oh, fandom God. is huge! It is huge! Regardless of their behavior and how they act, it is a huge fandom, and it's even bigger when you consider that they are not a sub sub subset from any other fandom. And I don't care how angry you guys get, you can rip me apart in the comments, I don't give a crap. The MLP fandom is a subset of the furry fandom. So, do you really consider that we are big? Yeah. Are we huge? No. We are not as big as you, uh, as people may consider. Yeah, but here's the thing where my mindset for the brand, okay, true that the Brony fandom may be big, but it's not that big. But the amount of adults or the amount of people who are able to spend on toys are a lot. So, with that, it's helping Hasbro kind of carry on the property and get more sales because I'm sure that little Lisa won't get the money to buy that pony each week or that blind bag box. Yeah, well yeah, little Lisa yeah. for every for every for every brony that buys that, there's like twenty or thirty children that are true. buying and also, or that their parents are buying yeah, their toys. True but and also the branding 
the licensing for the brand. Because I can assure you that Wheel of Fine is paying a hefty amount to get that licensing to print out pony products officially. Mm -hmm. And hopefully is receiving a good return mm -hmm. on that. Yeah, but let's see what the future wait, awaits for us. We have Season 6 coming in. We already have a preview for oh, it, God. regardless of what you think. Let's wait and see what they're going to do with <clears throat> it. Yep. Uh, I have already seen people say, no, jump off the boat, jump off the boat, get off the right, get off the right. I don't want to keep watching this show it's anymore. It's not ah! that bad. The preview is just a preview. It's just an episode. If we were to judge an entire season for 30 seconds, oh my God, what about that? That Why? In, in which point did we become so judgmental? Well, at least now I know what I'd look like if I was born <laughs> uh, without the horn. Okay, I have to ask this one. That the eyes bug me. Oh my god, yes, the eyes. No, yeah. the baby. Don't they you, are not don't... the the baby eyes for like the baby case. Yeah, that, that's all I was saying. Well, those are adorable eyes, though. Well, like... the, what you all fail to realize is that this is the mark of the chosen. <gasps> you will receive first and second tier clear status based on your eyes. Oh wow! Season one. Look at the picture of Cheer Lee as a as a foal. Big, cartoony eyes. Oh, can you tell God. me the name of the baby in Mysterious Mary Well, Of course you can't. With eyes like that, who gives a flip? Yeah. Uh, oh, Apple Jack Applejack. Oh, her, my God. Her it makes sense. Yeah. Oh. Uh, she Applejack had... in her photo. And uh the baby cakes, I'm sorry, Pound and Pumpkin are cutest buttons, but what have they done since then? Good point. Nothing. Look at Orubo and then tell, tell, tell Pinkie Pie to shh. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense now. Oh my god, why did oh. I see this coming? That's right, the, oh, well. the eyes have it. It's what happens. Norman, hide me. No. Hide me, I'm scared. Actually, As I'll hide should. behind all three of you, I'm scared. <laughs> As you should be, uh, but be warned, I've had beans. Oh before. no. I don't like beans. Hide me. Uh, well, but eh. Well, then don't hide behind me. me. <laughs> but anywho, but anywho, I think this is a good time to take our leave. Well, yeah. we, I, I will offer one final mm -hmm. thought. Yes. Po Pokemon Snap is the best game. Oh! Ooh! <gasps> yes! Silver, yes! You do yes. know things about Pokemon! <laughs> yes. That's all yes. I know. Wait, did you play any, po any Pokemon? Any Pokemon game where you can throw apples to <laughs> Pikachu is good on my book. It's fun to throw bad <laughs> things at Pokemon. I like no. that. I Silver! I love you even more now. Marry me, you thing. Throwing, th throwing you gas. <laughs> I don't care how creepy that sounded. I'm just happy. Throwing tear gas grenades into Pokemon's <laughs> eyes is like, ha 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 ha. You're blind now. <laughs> here, here's a shout out to, here's a shout out to the two best friends play. Go watch their, uh, quick let's play of that. Uh, game. Go watch two be the two best sisters. The, the two best sisters. Oh, that one too. <laughs> yeah. Watch to the window. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, leave. All right, it, it all comes back to ponies. So for the NBS show, I'm Silver Quill. I am Norman Sanzo. I have been a Spanish person. And I'm Sapphire Heart Song. And we're saying adios. See ya. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. That was the best four hours of my life. <laughs>